So this video is an update on my previous series where I built a website using Bootstrap 4. The thing is back then it was in the alpha and things have changed since then. I used Bower when I installed it last time and Bower has been depreciated. So what we're going to be looking at is how we can actually do it with NPN instead. This is if you want to have a nice build where you're customizing the SAS files that you're bringing in. So we're going to be looking at how we can install it using NPN and then how we can take those files and look at a bit of the SAS structure because the structure of, and the way we're importing things has changed. They've gotten rid of um, the custom folder where we used to customize the variables and stuff like that. So we're going to look at all of that in this video. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've created this empty file and inside of here, or it's a folder, not a file, inside of here, there's absolutely nothing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this in my code editor, which is VS Code. You can be using any code editor you want for this. So now that I'm in here, I can see um, I have uh, my welcome screen, we can get rid of that. And we have my Bootstrap 4 with nothing inside of it here. Now, one of the reasons I like VS Code is because it comes with a built-in terminal. So if I press Control and uh, the back tick button, which is right above the tab key, I get this terminal opening up. Now, if you're on a Mac you, and you're not using VS Code, you're using something else, you can just do a spotlight search for terminal. And if you're on a PC, you can use uh, Cortana's little search bar at the bottom or push uh, the Windows key and R, and that will open up a little run thing here. And you can just open up the CMD and uh, you can do everything that I'm doing here. You can just do that uh, where you see this. Now, the advantage of having it done inside of terminal is it's because I opened my project. Um, or inside of VS Code here is that it's already in the right spot. Um, if you're instead using either terminal or the um, command here, um, what you'll want to do, and it's really easy, you just push CD space, and let's just minimize this for a second. So uh, change directory, so CD space, and then I'm going to take this and just drag it right in, and it puts in the full path. So I push return, and now I'm in the right spot. So that's how you can do it either in terminal or in the, the, the command here. You can also be using uh, PowerShell or there's lots of other um, customized things a little bit also. So anyway, that's how we can get into that folder, but I'm just gonna be doing it over here in VS Code. Now, once you're here, what you wanna do is type node hyphen V to see if you have node installed on your computer. This will tell you if you do or not, um, if I have node installed on my computer, so it's telling me what version I have. So this is saying node and then version. If you don't have it installed, you get an error and it's going to say, we don't know what you're talking about. So if that's the case, you need to install node on your computer. Luckily, installing node on your computer is very easy to do. All you have to do is go to nodejos.org and this, the link for this is in the description down below. And you can just click this right here and install the latest uh, recommended one for users or the current, whichever one you'd want. It will automatically know if you're on a Windows or a Mac and you'll download the right thing and you just install it. Once that step's done and it's all installed, come back to here, just try again, node hyphen V, make sure that it sees node on your computer. Once that's done, and with you being inside of the right directory, we're going to write npm space init. And what this is saying is npm, which is node package manager. So when you use the installer to install node, it's giving you the node package manager. Node package manager is a very uh, popular and useful um, package manager that does a lot of really cool things. You can also use this to be using Gulp and browser sync and compiling SAS and a bunch of other stuff as well. I'm not going to be looking at in this video. We're just looking at how to install Bootstrap and um, give yourself some file structure. So npm init, and I'm gonna push return. It's gonna ask me some questions now. It's gonna ask me, um, uh, da, da, da. Um, press C and any time to quit. Package name. What do I want the name of it? It's taking my folder name. If you have a space in your folder, it's going to give you an error if you try and keep that. So you might need to give it a different name, but I'll just push return version one. I'm just going to pass through all of these. I'm just pushing return over and over and over. Author. There we go. Is this okay? Yes, it is. And we're done. Now, one thing with uh, when you're working in the terminal here, that can be annoying is this when your screen is full of stuff. So you can always write clear and push return. So it's just clear, return, and it just gets rid of everything so it's not in your way anymore. 
Um, now when we did that npm init, what it did is it installed this package.json file. And this is just explaining the basics of my project right here. So the name, the version, the description, all those questions it just asked me, it used those to fill this out. So if ever you want to change something, you can just come in here. If I wanted my author, I could just come in and write it like that and save my file. And I've updated that. You don't really need to come into here for anything, though. Um, so that's done. Now that we have npm initialized in our folder, what we need to do is, so now we can install Bootstrap. So what we can write is npm, again, uh, install Bootstrap. Now, if you just install Bootstrap, it's not going to install jQuery or Popper JS, and Bootstrap's JavaScript relies on those. So what you, if you do want to install all of them, you can also do jQuery space popper.js. And we're also going to do a hyphen hyphen save at the end. And what this does is it's going to save it in uh, to our project to let them know these are things that we're using in our project. And we'll see how that works in a second. So I'll hit return. We'll wait a second because it needs to install all of those. You should get a little thing pop up and this is the progress bar as it progresses along and it's installed them all. And now you can see because I put the hyphen hyphen save here, it's actually updated this package.json file and it's put them as dependencies. So it's saying this, this project that I'm working on is dependent on bootstrap version four, jQuery and popper JS. So that's why I wrote the hyphen hyphen save here. It also created a package hyphen lock.json. If I look in here, it's more information on those. So there's my bootstrap for all of the stuff for that, my jQuery and my popper JS stuff here. And lastly, it installed this node modules thing. If I look in there, there's a bootstrap, a jQuery and a poppers JS. So all of those have been installed onto my system. So that's exactly what we wanted. So with that done, what I'm going to do next is um, I want to organize my files a bit and on the stuff I want to be working on. So generally when something's in the node modules, you don't actually touch it. And we're not going to be touching it. These are saved on the side. Um, and then, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a new folder. So in node, in VS code here, I can just click on this to create a new folder. Uh, you can also do this however you want, but I'm going to make a new folder. I'm going to call this uh, source. So this is my source files. This is where I'm going to be working. And in my source here, I'm going to make a new folder for my SCSS. And this is where I'm going to be putting in all my own CS SCSS files or my SAS files. Uh, and the last thing I also do while we're at it here is I'll make a new file called index.html. And I just want that to be right in my source file actually. Um, so in my source, I have my index.html and in SCSS, you can also have a JavaScript folder, um, eventually end up with a CSS folder as well and all of that stuff. Um, so in this SCSS folder, I can make a new file and I'm going to call this one, um, my, it's my main one. So I'm just going to call it styles.scss. And this is where I want to import everything to. So if you go into my next series, you'll see a bit more of how I actually organize my uh, file structure and all of that, which, and you can follow along with that series, but there is a big difference and it's because they got rid of the custom folder. They don't, they no longer have a custom folder with bootstrap. So I'm actually going to go into my node modules here and into bootstrap into SCSS and scroll all the way down. And you'll see here there's a bootstrap.scss where they're importing all of the stuff here. And I'm actually just going to take this, copy this whole thing, and then go into my own styles and paste all that in there. And all the way at the top here, let's put in a little comment. This is bootstrap imports. Oops, I should have just done this as a, there we go, bootstrap imports. You don't need all of these. And this is the big thing that I talked about in the other one. But right now it's not actually going to import. If I tried to do this and I'd set it up so my SAS would compile, this would currently give me an error because this isn't where I am. So I just need to come in here and um, I'm just pushing control. If you're on a Mac, you can push command and this should be in the same in any text editor you're using. You can place your cursor in a whole bunch of places all at the same time. So I'm just placing my cursor all the way down. 
almost there, almost there, almost there. Okay, so we're currently in my SCSS folder. So I'm gonna go one step back. So dot dot goes one step back. So I left my SCSS folder, I'm in my source folder. Let's go back a step again. And now I'm in my main root folder. So from my main root folder, I need to go into node underscore modules. And from here, I need to go into bootstrap. And from bootstrap, I need to go into SCSS. And now I'm navigating into the correct place. I don't want to be touching their files, but I want to be importing them into my own project. So this is the easiest way just to import them into my project without touching the node modules folder. So I'm just importing directly from node modules into my project. And then the other advantage here is I can come into this and pick and choose the things that I want to be using. So for example, on the project I'm doing, I'm not going to be using this so I can comment it out. Uh, tables, I won't be using. Forms, I won't be using. Buttons, I definitely will be trying to, you know, some of these you'll definitely want to be using and other ones you will probably not want to be using. So you can just comment out the ones you won't be bringing in. And this is going to really help out because it's going to limit the amount of extra um, CSS you have, or not CSS, the, limit the amount of extra compiled CSS that you have at the very end. Because you will definitely end up with a whole bunch of CSS if not, and it's all these things that you'll never actually using. So just comment out everything in here that you're not actually using. Uh, in your project. And the nice thing about this is later on, if you decide, oh, you know what, I actually need that, you just come into here, you remove your little hyphen, save your file, and then all of a sudden you're up to date and everything is going to be working fine. Um, the last thing I want to say is just the way that the custom files work. So if you go and you look in their CSS folder, I'm going to find their variables. So they used to suggest um, to overwrite their variables to actually come in and change um, they, they had a custom folder that they recommended you used and they don't do that anymore but because they've placed default in front of everything what this means is you can come in here and just use them however you want so in my own variables file so let's go find here in here I'd probably have another folder I probably have another folder, but just for demo purposes, I'll just make a quick file, underscore variables dot scss. And say I don't want to be using, you know, their colors exactly like they are here, uh, or I want to change the blue, I could just come in here, copy this, paste it in, take off the default tag that's on here, and just change this to anything I want. Blue, uh, let's just write in blue like that, so it's a different blue. This is going to overwrite the other one once I import it. And I could actually import it at import my uh, whoops, variables. I could import it at the beginning because they're using the default flag. And because I'm not using the default flag, it doesn't matter where I overwrite their styles. I can overwrite them anywhere I want and my, my variables will win out. Um, so you probably want to be uh, overwriting their variables here. So when it's bringing in all of this stuff here, that it's using your variables instead of their original variables, um, just to, to be safe. And then you can also start working on your own stuff along the way. Um, it doesn't have to be variables. It could be a custom folder. It could be whatever you want to call it. But I'm just saying that you, to overwrite them, you're doing it in your own CSS folder anymore. They don't have the custom one that used to be part of where they'd recommend bringing it in. It used to be something they recommended doing. They've gotten rid of that and just say they just say do it in your own so do it in your own files. Don't do it within our files anymore. Um, so that's it. Everything else should work the same way I did in my last series. So if you want a bit more details on all this stuff I did. Go and check out that series where I go into a lot more detail and I use a lot of these things. There are some little differences between some of the syntax that I've used because they have updated things, they've changed some class names and stuff, but there's nothing that's revolutionary in how it's done. It's really the NPM install that has changed compared to how I did it in my previous video.